Oh, good evening. This is K Bar User again with another knife review. It's been raining real hard here since I did my uh, EDC video. For the last couple of days, we've been getting some torrential downpours and some flooding. So, as long as I'm stuck inside, I figure I'd do another knife review. This is um, this is the Wilderness Explorer 2. I don't know if I can get it in the frame there or not. But you can see it's the uh, Explorer Wilderness 2. And this is a 10 inch blade. And uh, the blade did come stainless 440 surgical. I don't know if you can see that there or not. This cord wrapped with. Uh, actually, I, re I re wrapped this with green um, wire twine. Is I guess what they call it. Uh, makes a lot of good snares. As far as this knife, this is another 80 survival knife. The handle is nice and knurled to give you a good grip. And uh, the sawback teeth on this actually work to a certain extent, like if you're making notches for traps or whatever, snares. It's a really good uh, option rather than trying to drive the knife down and, and carve out snares and whatnot. Now, this knife I got recently and like most J Japanese knives it uh, it bears a striking resemblance to a lot of other survival knives of the time. This one here comes equipped with two screwdrivers. Uh, this one's really pointed here. I don't know if you can see the point on that or not. And there you go. That actually will either do a Phillips or a flathead. This side here is a thicker uh, uh, flathead type screwdriver. That's a little nice cut out there. Put your fingers in, but I wouldn't advise you choking up on it. But it makes a pretty good chopper. I've chopped a couple of trees with it just to see how it does. And once again, it is a screw up cap. cap itself is solid billet uh, stainless steel. It is a hammer cap, so you see there's no compass in it. It is gnarled, and there is an O-ring to keep it waterproof. No compass in it, though. I didn't get one in there. And, of course, there is... Well, there's a pack of military damp-proof mash, damp matches in there. Some fish hooks and line and whatnot at the bottom. The case itself, it's basically a standard case. Uh, it's got one retention strap. It's made of pretty good heavy leather. It's riveted with four good rivets to the back of the case. I mean, these 80, these 80 survival knives were made really, really well for what they are. Um, of course, you got your typical stone pouch on the front, which this one has a, a light grit. Um, I guess it would just be your standard sharpie stone, but it's a very fine grit and it's a thin one. I don't know if you can see the thickness of that, but it's a really thin, it's not the typical white Japanese whetstone you get with them. Now the sheath itself, as you see, it's got a hole for a lanyard, which I don't have. And it's got some nicks and dings on it. This is a pretty old knife, this is made back in the early 80s, like everything else some wear marks on her. Whoever owned this knife before me though, um, I'm not sure if you can see it there or not, just the numbers. They had this serial number and his name is inscribed on this side. So whoever had this knife before me really took care of this knife and really, you know, uh, thought of it as a really good knife. But which it is. I mean as a chopper knife, it's a great piece to chop with. I've done it, and it's taken out saplings one chop. It's chopped some harder wood. You can't really baton with it because of the saw back blade, but like I always said, I'm not a big fan of batoning. It's got a like a 10 inch blade. It's a 6 inch handle, I believe it is, with the cap on. All in all, it is a, a lighter blade. It's, it's a good fighter, I guess if you had to put it in a commission for fighting. 
and that's basically what the 80s blades were fashion after that you, you know you could fight with them and do a Rambo thing and whatnot I just like them because it's what I grew up with you younger guys are probably growing up with uh, you're probably growing up with the five inch blades and the French trade knife type blades and whatnot and the bushcraft blades I didn't I this is what I grew up with if you were buying a survival knife at a time this is what you bought and the price tag of this was right around $35 when it was new. And it's just uh, another great knife from Japan out of the early 80s. It's a Wilderness Explorer. If you all remember, I did a review, well, probably a week or so ago, the Wilderness Explorer. Um, the smaller knife with the camouflage case. So as you can see, they did quite a few few variations. There is another knife, it's a explorer knife that's camouflage like this only it has a boot knife blade. It's a double edge dagger type blade and I'd like to get my hands on one but I can't get the guy to budge on it so. Um, well there they are. They're my explorer collection I call them and there's a lot more to be added to it but I just don't have them yet. Now another knife I'd like to show you, I'll set these aside, is a Life Knife Commando. There it is there. Now this camouflage I put on this to give it a little extra grip because it does come with just a painted um, steel blade, or steel handle I should say. Now this is, this is the first hollowed handle survival knife that was put out and pardon my dog's barking there's a, something running around in the yard I don't know if it's a deer or that big bear I was talking about but once again as in all 80 survival knives you got a saw back and these actually work pretty good but you still have them there for notching and whatnot it's a six inch spear point blade the handle itself has got holes in it unlike the other two explorers this one's got ex holes in it so you can lash it to a spear I would imagine for uh, or lash to a pole for a spear there is a really good compass in the blade or in the handle it does point north one points north one point south there we go now we're twisting the north and it's, it's, it's kind of a, of a sensitive compass, too. I mean, it, it goes north really fast. You could nail it, and it'll go out a few degrees and float right back in the north. Now, this knife here came with an optional hammer cap, which I do have. The compass wouldn't be here to be like the other Explorer, where the handle, the handle pommel here is just hard steel. It does come with an old ring to waterproof the inside. It's got some uh, waterproof matches in it and a striker. I don't really believe in carrying the whole fishing kit, whole thing, and a knife. I'm going to carry something in a handle at all. It's going to be matches because that's probably what I'm going to need the most rather than anything else. Now, with these knives, the explorers and this knife here, there's no. Uh, usually, with a survival knife this type up in here, there'll be a screw. And it's, there's a nut that holds the blade on. With these blades here, and the Explorer and the other Explorer, they're cast right into the handle. So it's a solid knife. So there's no screws to come apart. And um, just a basic history on this from what I researched recently. This is the original knife. Who sold out to... Um, the Wilderness Explorer Company in Sake, Japan, who produced, you know, the big Explorer 2, the small Explorer, and the other types of Explorers, and then Valor took them over, and Valor came out with their own type of knife designed by Al Mar. And believe it or not, all these caps, except for the little Explorer, this cap here, 
if it's my Parker I may if it's this one the sheath itself is a typical survival sheath it has the uh, the whetstone just like my wilderness explorer only on a bigger basis it does have some tie downs one unique feature it does have though is in the back here there's a pouch and in the pouch contains two split key rings. Now if you're wondering what they're for, in the pouch here there used to be a survival saw. One of them wire saw, commando saws. And that's where you kept your O-rings where in the older survival knives they were kept right here on the cap. So that's a neat little feature there and you can put whatever you want in the pouch. I just kept the original pieces together. As you can see, once again, it's a really good leather case, patent leather. The inside's a little rough, just to keep it from sliding on your belt. For the most part, it is pretty waterproof. And I do like the way to have the leg straps that come through the top, down the back, and out through the top, the bottom. But as a good friend of mine from Fun in the Woods, David Pearson, says, you tie them around your leg and they wind up around your dean and you wind up falling over them. So that's the um, that's the life knife commando. This also came in a camouflage version. This is a black one with a stainless blade. It came in a camouflage version, like that little explorer with just a a blued blade on it. And overall, on a knife, it's about uh, I don't know, 12 inches, 11 inches overall. I never really measured it out because it just sits in my collection, which is a shame because knives like these need to be used, but considering it is a 33-year-old uh, knife, I'm really sure I want to use it for anything, but, you know, I take a fish with me every now and then or doing some light camp chores or uh, probably take this one on the Explorer hunting with me, not the big one, the little one. I'd probably take them hunting with me this year, just give them a try out you know, every knife deserves to have a timeout. And uh, outside of that, it's got some nice finger grooves there. You can see where my fingers fit in there. You can see the finger grooves. And it, it fits the hand well. It's a nice, robust handle. Well, this is K-Bar User once again bringing you a knife review. And hopefully this week it'll stop raining and I can get outside and get some bushcrafting videos up again. Um... But I do want to thank you for your time. I do want to thank you for all the support you give to me and my channel. And uh, you guys all have a great night. Oh, look at that. To daddy, mommy, and a little baby. Oh, that's cute. Good night now.